Good morning. It's Monday morning again, and it's great to see you here on Facebook Live. My name is Melissa Ebkin, and I'm the pastor of the Iliopolis and the Nyanic Christian Churches in Iliopolis and Nyanic, Illinois. I'm the founder of Light Life and Love Ministries. That's a combined ministry effort of the two churches and an outreach effort for those who are spiritual but not religious or those who haven't found that faith community just yet. Also the host of the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast. It's a really cool podcast. You should check it out wherever you listen to podcasts. This morning I want to continue our discussion on forgiveness. The last two weeks we have spoken about this topic. First on the first Monday of January we talked about the power of forgiveness. Last Monday, we talked about the many benefits of forgiveness that transcends how we feel. It affects our physical health, our mental health, emotional health, spiritual health. Today, I want to talk about why it is so hard for us to forgive. I have had some folks reach out to me and talk about um, the heavy things that they are carrying, the things that they would like to be rid of, but they just don't feel ready quite yet. <clears throat> and today I want to talk about why it's so hard to do this work. And the key in all of this lies in the pain itself. I mean, we have a need to forgive because we've been hurt and it stings. It stays with us. And for some of the people that have reached out to me, it runs deeply to a point where it kind of defines you a little bit. So let's jump in and talk about why it's so hard to do this. First, I want to say that um, the main thing that's so difficult, a lot are come from some primal emotions and some misunderstanding on what forgiveness is and what it means. So before we start, just to clear that up, forgiveness and reconciliation are two different things, completely different things. We're not talking about reconciliation when we talk about forgiveness. Reconciliation may or may not happen after we do the work of forgiveness. <clears throat> this is just doing the work of forgiveness. And what forgiveness means is being able to recall that event or be around the person who wronged us and not have those negative emotions attached to it. So we can think back on it and we don't go on that emotional journey that went with it. We can be around that person and not feel all of those negative emotions again. So that's what we're after when we talk about forgiveness, the jettisoning of all of the emotional turmoil that goes along with the event. So first, why it's so hard to do this is we'd rather get even. There's a part of us that says, you hurt me, I want to hurt you back. And I'm not going to move past this until I can do that. Unfortunately, when we do that, we still have the pain of what happened originally and we haven't done anything to address that. And now we have another issue that we have to look inside of ourselves about. So the getting even part more often compounds the problem than alleviates it. We think it'll alleviate it, but often if you talk to anyone who has sought revenge, they're still there in that same place that they were before. So that's one of the things. The second one is we're keeping it fresh. We keep revisiting the event, wondering about what we could have done or said differently, how we could have handled the situation differently. We're trying to replay it. Part of doing the work of forgiveness is realizing the past is done and we can't go back and redo anything. It just is what it is at this point. I know that expression drives me crazy, but we can't go back and undo or redo anything that already happened. So when the pain is, stays fresh, when we keep it fresh, it makes it more difficult. We can't reach a place where we're ready to move beyond it. Also, anger feels like power. Uh, when we've been wronged or betrayed or hurt, we've feel like a victim or we may feel like a victim and that's a yucky way to feel and that's powerless. But when we feel anger, we feel right and we feel righteous and that feels a whole lot better than feeling helpless. How we get that 
power back or how we move beyond that is to let go, jettison those negative emotions. When we are able to forgive, when we're able to release that grudge, we get our power back because we get to decide how we live our lives. The person who wronged us, who did that act, has control over us as long as we're holding on to that grudge. They get to decide how we feel when we encounter them. Wouldn't it be nice to have the power back to go where you want to go, do what you want to do, doesn't matter what they do, where they go, you get to decide how you feel and how you react and how you live. That's a powerful difference. Uh, we don't want to be hurt again. That's another reason why we shy away from forgiveness. And to some, the idea of forgiveness is equated with being a doormat. You're simply rolling over and allow the person who hurt you to hurt you a second time. The thing is that that's not true. Our choice to forgive really has nothing to do with the other person. Again, forgiveness and reconciliation are two different steps. You can forgive, you can let go of all of those negative emotions, you can release that and choose to not be in relationship with that person again. Reconciliation is a separate step from forgiveness. Uh, we feel like forgiving is admitting defeat. It may feel like if we forgive that we're the loser in the action. I don't know what to tell you there. Uh, it's like that old saying, if you hold on to a grudge, it's like swallowing poison and expecting the other person to die. We're punishing ourselves when we hold on to grudges. So if you want to succeed, be, be forgiving, be forgiving. There is also a saying that uh, the best form of revenge is to live a good life. Have success, live a great life. That's the best way if you're in, in that mindset. Uh, we don't want to forget what happened. Okay, and I'm going to get on the soapbox here for a minute. Uh, we hear forgive and forget all the time. I really do not like that expression. The whole point of forgiveness is being able to recall the situation and not have the negative emotions. It's being able to be around the person and not have the negative emotions. Now, when we do the work of forgiveness, uh, that event, that betrayal, that hurt, it's not gonna bob up to the surface in our minds. That's cool, but we can recall it and not have to go there emotionally. Uh, again, it's taking our power back. It's taking charge of how we feel and how we're going to feel regardless of what anyone else does. The, um, the next thing that gets in the way of forgiveness is that we feel like the other person should apologize first. Maybe so. In a perfect world, they would realize that they had slighted us or wronged us or hurt us somehow, and they would come and ask for forgiveness. But some people aren't going to realize that, and some people just aren't going to do it. And they may not have the opportunity to do it. So take charge of your own emotional health. Take charge of your spiritual health. Remove the other person from the equation. It doesn't matter what they do or what they don't do. You have the choice within yourself to decide the life you want. Release the grudge. Move away from the emotional turmoil it causes and live a better life. Don't wait for them. Again, if you wait for them, you're letting them decide what kind of life you have. Uh, we're experiencing peer pressure might be another reason we don't forgive. Our friends mean well, but man, they may be fueling the fire of holding on to that hurt. So they may not understand all of the situations, and maybe they do, but the point is, it's your life, and you decide how you want to live it, the quality of life that you want. Uh, and again, the next one, it feels like a chance to punish the person who did you wrong. And again, our anger feels so right and so righteous, but we can cling to that or we can choose to have a better life. 
Forgiveness matters in our physical health and our oh, so many aspects of our lives. So it's a choice you get to make. Are you wanting to hold on to that or do you want to have a great life and forget them, forget what happened? Not forget, but forget the emotions attached to what happened. Again, you get to choose the life you want. Uh, next is you don't realize how much it matters. And I think we've talked about this in the last couple of weeks. Forgiveness matters to your health. It matters to your relationships. It matters to your outlook. It matters that grudge that you're holding on to is affecting your life. So again, you get to decide the life that you want and what you want in life. Um, they were, might just do it again. Well, probably so. But again, forgiveness is one thing. Reconciliation is another. Choose what you want in your life and who you want in your life and act accordingly. Or finally, you just may not be ready. And if the pain is too fresh, you just might not be ready yet. But if you're in that place that you don't feel like you're ready, look back through the, go to the blog, the Spirit Health blog on lightlifeandloveministries.com. The link is in the comments. If you're watching this live, it'll be in the comments when it's done. And read those first two blog posts. If you're not ready yet, work on getting to the place where you can because it makes a difference in your life. Uh, forgiveness damages our health. Well, no, lack of forgiveness damages our health. When we're able to forgive, it benefits our health physically, mentally, emotionally. It, it affects all of our relationships. It affects our outlook. And at work, it affects our job performance. So do what you need to do to get yourself ready to forgive. And again, reach out to me. I will help you do this. I hope you are having a good January wherever you are. I hope the weather is temperate. I hope that your life is how you want it to look. If it's not, you can make it different. Even if it seems impossible right now, even if it seems like you are sentenced to a horrible fate, life can be good. Reach out to me. I want to help you, support you in making your life the best it can be. This is Melissa Ebkin, and I will see you here again next week. If you want to catch up on any of these videos, go to the YouTube channel. Uh, go to YouTube and type in Melissa Ebkin. It'll take you right there. Uh, all of these videos are uploaded there as well as the podcasts and some other stuff. So be well, friends, and I'll see you here again next week. Bye for now.